After a hard day's work, most of us look forward to a good night's sleep. Well, if you suffer from insomnia, then trying to fall asleep can be a real nightmare for some mm, people. I don't know if I've got insomnia, but I do have trouble sleeping at night. Mm, okay. Apart from insomnia, there are the other sleep disorders such as sleepwalking and sleep apnea. Primetime Morning spoke recently to Dr. Lim Li Ling, Medical Director of the Singapore Neurology and Sleep Centre. And Dr. Mark Hon, uh, while Ignatius and Ear, Nose and Throat Surgeon, for more about this. Well, the, what happens in snoring is the walls of the upper airway are banging together. And, and that suggests that the airway is small, and if the air passage is banging together, the person is choking himself during sleep. Okay. And therefore, not enough air and oxygen is going in, and the carbon dioxide is not coming out. So if you're choking yourself during sleep, it's actually not a very good thing. It affects the sleep quality. You actually are not sleeping very well. Okay, so what are some recommendations to overcome that? Well, there's a whole range of, uh, of uh, disorders that snoring may suggest. On, on one hand, on the very mild end, it's called primary snoring, where it's just banging on the walls, but somehow the airflow is still enough. On the other end is obstructive sleep apnea. Apnea means no breathing. So in this condition, there is choking during sleep, sleep is affected, it increases the risk of developing, developing medical problems like high blood pressure, heart diseases, mm -hmm. strokes and diabetes. Now the poor sleep quality will also affect the daytime functioning, the quality of life for that person who's not sleeping well at night. Okay, okay, so it becomes a bit of a vicious cycle because yes. you're not well rested, therefore you're more tired. Then again, you don't get a good night's sleep and just keeps carrying on. What about insomnia, Dr. Lim? I mean, why are there so many cases? Is there a way to... Are, we, are some people just born with it? Well, insomnia relates to the quality where we don't get good quality sleep, either a perception of unrefreshing sleep, you can't fall asleep or you can't stay asleep. And the most common reason why people have insomnia is because of a heightened state of arousal. So this is very common because a lot of people have a heightened state of arousal related to stress. This is probably the most common. Too many things to do, too many things on our plate, lots of worries. So sometimes this spills into a psychological disorder like depression or anxiety. So the top three that I probably see are too much stress, poorly managed, depression or anxiety. So since these states of being are relatively common, insomnia probably is one of the most common sleep disorders that we see next to sleep apnea that he just talked about. Um, less commonly, insomnia can be related to a physical problem like sleep apnea. Sleep apnea because it blocks your breathing during sleep, it causes you to wake up. So your sleep is not sustained or deep. Sometimes it's a physical problem like restless legs, you know, pain anywhere like arthritis. And most people, whether they have the psychologically based or physically based causes of insomnia, they also have some habits which are not conducive to good sleep, mm -hmm. like drinking too much caffeine, you know, working till very late, going to the gym at you know, 11 p.m. and expecting to sleep by 12 midnight. So usually it's a combination of factors and each of these factors which can, we can address when the patients come to see us. Okay, we'll talk about possible cures, I guess, for insomnia, but first let's talk about what about nightmares keeping people awake? Okay, nightmares are more common in children, but in adults they can happen. Nightmares are like what we call bad dreams. So since dreaming are a natural phenomena, what are nightmares? Nightmares are just like bad dreams. So usually we see this in adults. Um, it's less common as a cause of insomnia. It usually suggests that the patient has a lot of psychological distress. So one of the things we do is we try to explore the background, whether there's some, you know, something in their subconscious usually that is causing them to you know internalize this and it manifests as nightmares so the treatments for nightmares will beginning will evaluate if they have any psychological uh, process underneath and then the treatment is usually based on sometimes medications like antidepressants anxiety medication but some component of it is non-drug like talk therapy uh, what we call psychotherapy so what if you have, uh, what if you have good dreams good dreams is fine I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, we actually have several dream cycles throughout our sleep uh, architecture at night. Yeah. So having good dreams is good. In fact, dreams are thought to be a time during which we process things that happen throughout the day. We don't exactly know the function of it and people have tried to analyze right. what it means. Uh, but actually dreams is just a way of processing what has happened to us throughout the day. So dream sleep is thought to be important for uh, memory, consolidation and learning and also a way of our, you know, the, the chip in our brain trying to process the things throughout the day. So if you had pleasant things, then you tend to have pleasant dreams. If you have a, you know, negative anticipation and apprehension and worries, then they can come out as nightmares. So rather than just medicate them, we usually try to ferret out what is the underlying problem and we try to help them to cope better with this probably deeply internalized okay. distress. For those who do have to resort to medication, is it a good long-term solution, would you say, Dr. Mark? Well, 
if you do have to resort to medication, I think you have to first evaluate the cause. And if you can fix the cause, over the long term, you can wean off the medication. Relying on medications alone long term is not a good solution. I guess you're referring to sleeping pills. Mm -hmm. We tend to use sleeping pills for the shorter term because they can be very addictive. They have a lot of long-term problems associated with them. So if you use sleeping pills, like it's a mask for the underlying problem. So let's say you have a psychological problem like depression. This is the most common. We see people who have been medicated with sleeping pills. It puts them to sleep, but it doesn't actually solve the underlying problem, which is masks. Yeah. So, and then in the long term, after you've been on addictive sleeping pills, then you become addicted, which is a bad thing. You might need higher and higher doses over time. And how sleeping pills work is actually they calm the mind so in the long term you may be mentally dulled and your underlying problem wasn't solved so it's, it's not a fix at all okay. so we try to give patients sleeping pills sh short term no more than two to four weeks during which time we teach them better coping techniques and we may initiate the proper course of treatment which is like antidepressants which take about two to four weeks to take effect so it's a gut it's a nice blend otherwise yeah. the body just becomes reliant on the pill and doesn't yes. know how to kind of work itself but uh, we, you were talking earlier about insomnia where you know people can't get enough sleep but there's the other extreme where people sleep too much it's something called hypersomnia is that right yes that's right yeah so, and that can be bad too right well, um, there's two ways to look at it. Hypersomnia, if it's due to a disorder, is uh, not good. Mm -hmm. But um, hypersomnia just means sleepiness, excessive sleepiness. So the most common cause of that is actually voluntary sleep deprivation. So the hypersomnia is the body's way to catch up on lost sleep. So that is actually good. You should be trying to catch up on sleep that you didn't get. But I've got to ask you, because I've heard that theory before, where they say you can't catch up on lost sleep. You can't say, I'll sleep in this weekend for 24 hours and make up for the, you know, the five hours each day I've missed over the last five days. Well, you, you don't catch up the total number of hours that you've lost, but you do catch up on the sleep uh, deprivation. Uh, you cannot really bank sleep. That means I sleep more today and then I, I do less <laughs> with less sleep. Really Although if you actually are well rested, you can go uh, better when you are sleep deprived. You can, you can perform better when you're sleep deprived. Okay. So, so, so you can catch up a little bit in the sense. You can catch up. So in a way you actually, if you go with less sleep every day, for example, you sleep less, uh, five hours less every day, on the weekends, if you try and catch up on sleep, you don't catch up on 25 hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. You actually need less to catch up. So you actually uh, bought some extra time, but you actually pay for it in terms of less uh, uh, mental functioning during the day when you're sleep deprived. Now the okay. recommended number of hours sleep that for a healthy for a healthy person is eight, seven, eight hours. But I know so many people that get about five hours. Yeah. So what is healthy? Well, there's a normal range for adults, which is usually between 6 to 10 hours. So it varies from individual to individual. Generally, the amount of sleep that you require that is enough for you is the one that leaves you feeling refreshed when you wake up. So people who get enough sleep tend to wake up naturally and they feel refreshed and they can stay alert throughout the day. So if you find yourself that you can't crawl out of bed without loud alarm clock and you feel very sleepy you know, in mid-morning or late afternoon, then that usually means that you're sleep deprived. So the people who get overpowering desire to take a nap, usually they're sleep deprived. So Generally for adults, if they're getting four to five hours or less, typically it's not enough. There's a rare few people like Margaret Thatcher famously only yes. got by on four to five hours of sleep a night. These are what we call short sleepers, but that's pretty rare. Most people usually require six to ten hours, and for most adults, I think the range is six to eight hours a day. Does your body adjust to that? Does your body learn to cope with less hours of sleep? No, it doesn't actually. I think the amount of sleep we require stays relatively uh, stable throughout our adult life. Towards the end, as you're getting older, like 60s and 70s, it may come down by an hour or two because it's just a deterioration of the sleep mechanism. But uh, we can't really adjust to less sleep. What happens is that you will, you will cope, but as Ignatius said, you're going to pay the price of it in terms of your brain function being less and the significant health toll to having uh, not enough sleep on a long-term basis. So you pay a big price for it. And that was our discussion on sleep disorders and how patients can manage them. And we were speaking with uh, Dr. Lim Lee Link, consultant neurologist at the Singapore Neurology and Sleep Center, and Dr. Mark Hon, an ear, nose, and throat surgeon. I know we suffer from insomnia every now and then. Uh, for me, I, I had insomnia for the longest time, but yeah. I found a perfect way to get rid of insomnia. What's that? And that's to go to the gym, exercise so much yeah. that you get tired. And then you know. Yeah, but you, for some people, even that doesn't work. Yeah, so but for me, it worked. Really you know, because I think exercise somehow helps regulate your body or yeah, yeah as long rhythm. as you don't do it yeah. just before you go to sleep. No, don't. <laughs>